Calligraphy Award instituted by the family of Rai Bahadur V. Venkaya and organized by Tamil Heritage Trust. The award was introduced last year in 2022 and uh, Dr. Y. Subarayalu was the recipient of the first year's award. This is the second year award function and we are happy to announce that Dr. P. V. Krishnamurti will be receiving this year's <laughs> award from our chief guest, Sri N. Gopal Swami. Before we move on, before we move on to the main event, a brief introduction about Tamil Heritage Trust. Tamil Heritage Trust was founded in the year 2010 by Professor Swaminathan and a group of like-minded heritage enthusiasts in Chennai. Our motto is to understand, appreciate, disseminate and celebrate our Indian heritage. This organization is fully driven by volunteers. We have quite a few activities we do uh, to achieve uh, our uh, motto and these are uh, we have monthly heritage talks one in the first Saturday of every month that is online and in English and another one in the third Saturday of every month offline here at RK Center and we have annual seminars one is called page kacheri that happens in december uh, along with the musical season every year and we have windology festival that happens once in a year in the month of june we have uh, we do workshops every month we have uh, site seminars and workshops one is how to see a temple which has been uh, going on for the past uh, uh, from February to uh, this month. We take a group of people to uh, give them an introduction about temple architecture iconography and we take them around to a temple in the afternoon and uh, give them uh, a brief about all the temple uh, architecture and iconography and we have Another program, how to see a museum. We have house am program tomorrow and it is uh, fully booked. Some 30 participants are uh, joining in that. Other than this, we have something called a site seminar, which is by invitation. And we have uh, four months preparation and in-depth study about a chosen heritage site in India. We had been to all these people. These are the publications that we have done every year. Some of the photographs of our site seminar visits. We have something uh, called Alamar Awai for uh, Teachers for Heritage program, where we have a group of teachers and we uh, instruct them how to go about spreading heritage awareness in school children. We have a dozen programs for uh, Mamalapuram, Kanjipuram. This dozen program is a detailed study about the uh, site. First uh, one is for Mamalapuram, intensive three month program. Uh, we have with inclu including four days field visits, extensive reading of books and documentation prior to field visits, qualifying examination leading to certification and uh, uh, you will be a certified dozen by THD. Malai study tour is also uh, once in a while we conduct whenever uh, we are able to uh, volunteer ourselves we conduct this Malai study tour. So one and a half day program, half a day presentation prior to field trip to Mamalapuram. Certified dozen volunteers from THD to accompany the participants. It's a non-profit activity by uh, THD. 
we have awards one is professor s swaminathan heritage award this is given every year for exceptional uh, contribution towards understanding i mean uh, contribution towards heritage uh, in 2020 madhusudanan kalai chelvan received the award in 2021 dr g shankaran narayanan received this award in 2022 dr pradeep chakravarti received this award the next award is we have uh, what we have assembled here for v venkaya epigraphy award last year dr y subbarayalu received this award from uh, narasaya sir this year the award goes to dr p v krishnamurthy i request rangaratnam gopu to come and give a talk on dr venkaya rai bahadur venkaya so good evening i just want to uh, i'm going to give a brief note on the life and accomplishments of uh, shri venkaya in whom this na- in the this award is uh, instituted um it happened by accident it was a close it was a chance encounter so those of you who know venkaya might know this but there is a german scholar called Ernst Hulsh who had been invited uh the late 1800s english french german and russian scholars and several other europeans were actually very interested in discovering and understanding indian monuments architecture history and as we have which they have been doing for about 100 years and the latest scholar to be invited was hulsh and hulsh had gone to mamallapuram and he was trying to read some inscriptions there by pure coincidence venkaya who was really a teacher a school teacher in kanchipuram had just gone on tour that day and he used, he saw a white european trying to read the inscriptions of an ancient hindu monument so i think he was very intrigued and he walked up to him and saw what he was doing and venkaya I remember was in kanchipuram where there are several pallava temples including the famous kailasanatha and the vaikuntha perumal temples which have a lot of inscriptions and uh, hulsh and venkaya struck up a conversation hulsh was not even 30 yet he was in his late 20s venkaya was in his early 20s he had just graduated from as a physics graduate from madras christian college in tambaram and completely by chance they started talking and that interest led hulsh to offer him a job uh, imagine such a situation today you have such formal procedures even if you are fully qualified and they, you know after the after you are appointed for 2 years you can have court cases challenging your appointment all that there it was such a casual conversation purely out of interest he offered a physics graduate and a school teacher a job as a epigraphist and uh, this was a risky move because school teacher is something we have been doing for thousands of years whereas epigraphist is a brand new profession i mean the field of archaeology is barely 100 years old mostly westerners were interested indians to them it was some you know obtuse thing except for a very very small number of people and average school teacher is not interested in that kind of thing and here was mr here was a german guy appointed by the british government offering a kanchipuram school teacher a, you know a complete career change in a profession that he didn't know existed half an hour back or something right so the archaeological survey of india itself the body that governs all of that had been only established in 1861 so this is barely 25 years later and so you know you could see the hesitation this is hulsh these are of course older photos we don't have photos from their encounter uh, photos of them at a later age and that is mr venkaya and uh, at that point this is what mamallapuram look like not the polished scrubbed 
you know, well-maintained monuments that we are familiar with. Uh, those days, you see, even up till the 1940s, the only way to travel to Mamalapuram was by a, taking a boat on the Buckingham Canal. You have to go to, you know, Adayar, Saidapet, someplace, you know, take the Buckingham Canal, take a boat beaten by mosquitoes all the way with uh, no good food. Kalki writes a hilarious account of his travels and all that. So, that was the situation then. This photograph is from Alexander Ray, I think, in 1880, just a few years before they met. And that, that's when they had started cleaning up this place. And one of the inscriptions that they read, obviously, was this inscription at uh, this monument called Ganesh Ratha. Today, it's all, you know, very even grass and all that, lawns, very, very well maintained. You look at how rough it was. This inscription, the copy of this inscription is actually from an older account from a person called Babington. Uh, who had done the same thing 30, 50 years before, but it was not, there was very few scholarship on this. But this was now a formal effort by the ASI. Kalsh had been uh, uh, and appointed as a, an epigraphist. So now Venkaya obviously had some hesitation and also it was the middle of the school year. So he felt he had a responsibility to the students. So he waited until the year ended, the academic year ended. Then he took up, accepted the job, taking a big risk because he was the head of a household. It was a Hindu undivided family. He had three younger brothers, wife, children. So, you know, we didn't know how long the job would last, revenue, income, all of these doubts. And with all that, he accepted the job and uh, joined the ASA. At that point, I think their office, uh, Hulch was operating out of us in Bangalore. So, about a uh, year after the job offer had been made, he joined the ASA. And Venkaya and Hulch should make epochal discoveries. So, this is one of my favorite examples. In fact, anybody who says, you know, mentions these two people, this is the one that first comes up. Today, of course, we know that Rajaraja Chola built this monument and, you know, he's written inscriptions on the walls of the temple, like, you know, chapters of a book. And you have epigraphists like uh, Marxia Gandhi here, the first lady epigraphist of Tamil Nadu. And, uh, you know, they can read literally, you know, she's, you know, her students have said this, you know, she has said this. Others of our colleagues have said this. They are all surprised that, you know, they read inscriptions of the walls like, you know, we, we could read a newspaper or a book. And so, this is the accomplishment of the Tamil Nadu Archaeological Department which was established 100 years after the original ASI. And this was not read. The superstition at that point or the misconception at that point what that Karigala Chola had built this Tanjavur temple. It was named after Tanjasura. The early Cholas were unknown. And even the Pallavas, people didn't know who had built the Pallava monuments. People thought somebody called the Kurmvas had built them. And you could see up to 1900, you could see accounts of 1909, Alexander Ray, that Alexander Ray whose photo you saw of Mamallapuram, had published an account saying Kurumbas, a dynasty called Kurumbas had built the Pallava monuments. Only a few years earlier, it had been discovered that there was another dynasty called the Pallavas. The dynasty had been forgotten. Cholas at least were remembered because of their mentions in the uh, Shaivite literature and so on. And uh, Hulsh and um, Venkaya wandered around, you know, recording the temples. First, Mamallapuram was their first real project. They recorded every inscription at Mamallapuram. Then they went to Kanchipuram at the Kailasana, that temple which has extensive inscriptions. They recorded that. Then all these temples, Vrinchipuram, Velur, all these places. And then they went to Tanjavur and started reading it. And then, naturally, they stumbled upon somebody called Rajaraja Chola. And he says, Nanum, Akkanum, Yalarum, Katti Vithen, Katti Vithen. So, this is like, who is this Raja Raja Chola? People don't know. And so, they bring a completely forgotten character out of history because of these two people's efforts. Today, you can't go from Kashmir to Kanyakumari without, you know, mentioning Tanja. Our Prime Minister mentions this proudly. Raja Raja Chola is now very well known. Our Pony Insulon has come out, become a national, international film. But, nothing at that point. And so, they established that. And you could see the efforts in the first three volumes. The inscriptions of the Pallavas and the Cholas were published in from 1890 onwards. Very detailed books. If people who are not epigraphers are there, because unfortunately in our schools or colleges, inscriptions are simply not mentioned. We have some mention that Ashoka built some, you know, dug some wells and planted some trees. That's it. We don't mention anything else. But the inscriptions of India gave us an enormous amount of our history. Basically, we are actually more familiar, those of us in Tamil Nadu at least are more familiar with the accomplishments of Huve Swaminathan, who was a contemporary, because by reading and decoding and publishing the Sangam literature, he brought out the history of, you know, at least uh, he 
you know brought out the names that are mentioned in it and we got to know about 600 800 years of sangam history the history before these people and parallelly here were venkaya hulsh and all their successors and some of the predecessors and contemporaries discovering the histories and uh, you know accomplishments and monumental uh, uh, you know contributions of all these dynasties and this was happening all over the country right in fact a few years later only they discovered the indus valley civilization right 30 years later they discovered the indus valley civilization and so we had scholars like um, and hulsh and venkaya's publications and then the continued publications of others of uh, volumes of south indian inscriptions epigraphica indica and so on and all, so forth really enabled historians to study all these inscriptions construct construct genealogy construct histories construct timetables match you know data back and forth and construct and present the history of india of various dynasties as we know it today because literary sources give very little inscriptional sources are the ones that give the history of this period and so you know now of course nilakantha shastri is the you know most accomplished of those things and uh, those authors and we still use his book 70 years later as the established history of the south indian dynasties so after a little while of a few years of service hulsh went back to europe other people were appointed other scholars indians were also appointed with the recommendations for other point remember when hulsh was the chief epigraphist he was only a, a you know assistant uh, venkaya was only an assistant so when venkaya was eventually promoted to uh, chief epi- chief epigraphist it was itself a you know breakthrough because <coughs> positions and power were not necessarily easily given to indians at that time they were usually in subsidiary roles so that culture was changing and accomplished people were being recognized indians were being appointed as judges you know and uh, in in courts they were being appointed as vice chancellors and they were being appointed to take charge of uh, excavations and as uh, superintending archaeologists and so on this enabled venkaya to travel across india and one of the other people he served was john marshall who was the director of the archaeological survey who was credited with the discovery of the indus valley and publications so of course a lot of people are involved in that and we thanks to uh, his grand or great granddaughter sunita madhavan and ravi shankar we have some diary i, I was reading this yesterday the diary uh, notes of uh, venkaya and he talks about you know his health problems he was in bad health he had diabetes and dyspepsia and you know he comments that if he had been continued as a school teacher he may not have lived as long the heat would have killed him earlier and it is you know the travel and shimla that you know and enabled him to live longer and slightly healthier and it didn't he didn't live that long he he, he died at the age of 48 which is fairly young because he died before insulin and antibiotics and those things were invented so you can see you know like ramanujan or bharathiyar and other accomplished people people died of diseases that are curable for 100 200 rupee medicines today right and um, not only that the discovery of all of this and before the construction of such histories by historians even you could see the urge of venkaya to bring out what the cultural life would have so he writes an imaginary conversation between kundavai the sister of raja 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 and rajendra her nephew right and about what they should do how they should establish the kingdom so based on the inscriptions you, you should uh, you know expand the mahabharata you should talk about this this chalukya prince is doing this he is not witnessing this he is imagining it based on the inscriptions that he is reading and giving a, you know trying to attempt a fictional uh, conversation that is trying to set the agenda for how people can be interested in history and understand their past and take pride in their glorious past because 150 years of british rule uh, along with an enormous number of scientific and technological accomplishments that they have brought in right like the steam engine to they overtook our entire textile industry they, they were conquering two thirds you know 25% of the world so we had a tremendous inferiority complex and this is part of the you know mindset that we had to do this and so he was writing this probably inspired kalki much later to write a much more accomplished book which uh, so there are very besides the chola inscriptions and others there are landmark discoveries another scholar of that time a predecessor uh, called kv subramanyayar who discovered tamil brahmi had uh, you know discovered some they had discovered some copper plates in uh, dig- while digging in tiruvallangadu and he had actually they had discovered some nataraja statue a famous nataraja statue were discovered in Dhruva- tiruvallangadu he had all they had gone to see what it was he was bringing it back talking to the people at the priest he said they have some copper plates so that copper plates interested hulsh i mean venkaya 
So the copper plates were bought after some persuasion by Subramanian here, they were brought to Chennai. And uh, those copper plates were another revelation as revealing as the Mamalabram inscriptions or the Chola inscriptions of Tanjavur. So a detailed genealogy of the Cholas. That's the picture from the Egmore Museum. You can see that it will take to the, the one on the picture on top. That's the copper plates with the Chola seal. And it gives a detailed story. The first 15 plates or so, I think, are Sanskrit prashasti of the Cholas. And then only then it comes to the later. The actual plate talks about land grants and stuff like that. And so it talks about an enormous amount of history was discovered from that. And that excited them. Ironically, the Tirvalangar Nadraja, which became world famous object of admiration uh, as an art, lay neglected for a little bit, even though that was the inspiration for this. So, it is very interesting. And equally famous, he had gone to Uttarameru, studied that inscription, published it, you know, discovered, wrote about it, wrote notes about it. This is the one that is famously called the Kodavala inscription, democracy inscription. In, in fact, our chief election commissioner has also written about it in newspapers. Uh, Dr. Nagasami has written about it. Prime Minister has spoken about it in several places. Um, and uh, you can argue about what the content of the inscriptions is, but you know it talks about selecting officials by putting their names in a pot and then randomly picking them out, appointing them to certain boards. Detailed information about how many different boards were there for gardens, for water bodies, for farms and all these things and how many people were to be selected, what are the qualifications, terms of office, penalties. So all that stuff that people are talking about, constitutional norms and all that, very detailed for a village assembly. Not for appointment of a king, for a village assembly, of officers of village assembly. So, phenomenal uh, effect that had, that, that inscription had on in terms of how it affected the mindset of the people. There are others. Venkaya had an advantage that the Europeans couldn't, didn't have. He had knowledge of Tamil works, right? He knew the Puranas, he knew, he grew up with the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, he had studied the Tirupadigams, he had studied the Prabandham, at least not, may not, no, no, may not have comprehensively one of them, but he knew a lot of them. So, for example, there was mention in inscriptions of a place called Vyagrapura and uh, the, they were all confused and he said Vyagrapura is a translation of Puli Ur. It, this must be Chidambaram in Parantaka's plates and this is the same Parantaka who said because he covered it, covered Vyagrapura with copper, with gold, this must be the Punvainda sword and he was making those connections and also because he was a Brahmin, he was allowed to go into temples which some of the Europeans were not allowed to go into the sanctums. And he was able to record the inscriptions on the walls of the innermost shrines of the temples and all that. So, very special uh, accomplishments that he was able to do that. You could see that he had con correspondence with Uwe Swaminada here. Um, of his books that brought out, Subramanya Bharati, Bharati has written, I wish you could take a picture, next time we will do that. Uh, we will take a picture. Subramanya Bharati has written a laudatory review of you know the work that they were doing. Uh, even if you don't know Venkaya or what these people have done, as soon as you say Bharati, everybody stands up, their ears perk up, their curiosity is there. So, it's like Bharati and Kalki have that effect. Kanadasana is the third person, I think that has that effect. So, very interesting things that have happened, of which we know very little. So, then all these other scholars, um, you know, continue to bring. So, Venkaya, of course, uh, in 10 minutes, I can't do much justice to the life of Venkaya or what its significance is to us. But I'm just trying to give you, you know, uh, uh, you know, a, a sense of how relevant it was to today's understanding, because that inspired people like Srinivasa Iyengar, Raghav Iyengar, Dilakshakanta Shastri, just to pick three random people to uh, who wrote in English about the history of South India, and then successors and colleagues like Krishna Shastri who discovered hundreds of inscriptions. They are still discovering inscriptions and publishing them, right? Hundred years later, people are still discovering inscriptions, finding them. And eventually, now the Pony in Selvan that is contemporarily the big hit that, you know, based on this history is how we got this story, which, you know, was probably more successful than the Kundavai, than the Kundavai Raja, Rajendra Choda interaction. So, with this brief note, um, uh, I am very happy that uh, Venkaya's great granddaughter, Sunita Madhavan, uh, chose to establish this award and chose THT to uh, choose a committee to. Uh, select the you know candidates, identify the candidates and so on. Uh, so, thank you for the opportunity. I would like to now invite Ravi Shankar to introduce the uh, chief guest and the awardee of the day. Good evening. Uh, I have the twin privilege and uh, 
responsibility of uh, introducing two of the uh, best men uh, guests here one is the chief guest uh, shri and gopala swami other person is the uh, winner of the current uh, current winner of the uh, v venkaiya award i'll start with uh, shri n gopal swami shri n gopal swami did his schooling in manarkudi and graduation from st joseph college tirchirappalli he is a post graduate gold medalist in chemistry from university of delhi he joined indian administrative service in 1966 he must have been 22 years when he joined uh, uh, see probably at that time was one of the youngest uh, uh person to join a uh, indian administrative service he served in the state of gujarat for 25 years between 67 to 1992 in various responsibilities capacities he moved to government of india in 1992 and served in many capacities notably joint secretary in the department of electronics advisor education and planning commission secretary general in the national human rights commission secretary in the department of culture and as Union Home Secretary between 2002 and 2004. He became election. He became an election commissioner in 2004 and a chief election commissioner in 2006. During his stewardship as the chief election commissioner between 2006 and 2009, the election commission successfully implemented many innovation, including that of photo electoral rolls, to improve the quality of the electoral rolls. Sri Gopal Swami has been closely associated with and has made enormous contribution to India's culture and heritage both during his days in the government as well as later it was due to his initiative as secretary in the department of culture that Gagagunda Cholapuram and Dharasuram in Tamil Nadu and Champaner in Gujarat came to be inscribed in the UNESCO's list of world heritage sites in fact uh, the uh, Tanjavur temple was uh, inscribed in uh, as a world heritage site way back in 1987 so after 17 years uh, two of the uh, monuments in tamil nadu especially the the what we call as great chola temples okay uh, became uh, became part of the world heritage sites he was instrumental in getting vedic chanting incorporated as one of the unesco's world oral heritage the national manuscript mission a program to unearth and digitize manuscript wealth of this country was initiated by him he headed the committee that prepared and submitted to government of india in 2015 a report long term vision and road map for the development of sanskrit he continued to serve the cause of sanskrit with passion he is currently the chancellor of rashtriya sanskrit vidyapitha at tirupati now known as national sanskrit university it was designated as a central university in april 2020 he is the trustee chairman of sanskrit promotion foundation new delhi which conducts uh, classes in fact uh, takes lot of i mean efforts in propagating the knowledge of uh, the sanskrit he is also the president of madras sanskrit college which is very close to our uh, venue He was chairman of Kalakshetra for five years from 2014. Another area that has benefited from his experience and commitment is the field of education. He is currently the president of Vivekananda Educational Society, which runs a group of 25 schools in and around Chennai, many of them in villages and in suburban areas. He is the chairman of Empowered Expert Committee set up in 2018 by UGC, that was tasked with identifying 20 unis universities. with the potential to grow into institutions of excellence since august 2020 he is chairman of madras institute of development studies mids an economic and social science research oriented institution mids is a national research institute under the sponsorship of government of india through the indian council of social science research and the government of tamil nadu since november 2021 He is the president of Voluntary Health Services (VHS), a hospital that is focused on providing healthcare at affordable cost to the public at large. And Sri Gopal Sami was awarded Padma Bhushan in 2015 for his distinguished public service. Thank you.
before i introduced uh, dr pv krishnamurthy let me uh, share some thoughts about the how the uh, process went on in selecting the uh, winner uh, we are happy that we are holding the award function in july the month of rai bahadur v venkaya's birth 159 years ago he was born on 1st july 19 1864 um we wish in fact okay we conducted this uh, meeting on 1st july uh, but for some reason we could not hold it this award as you know was instituted by mrs sunita madhavan she is the great granddaughter of v venkaya she served in uh, minakshi college as a professor of economics as well as the head of the department the award uh, consists of a citation and uh, an amount of rupees 20000 this year we received 10 nomination the jury consisting of dr suman jain she is a professor of uh, paleography and epigraphy in the department of ancient indian history culture and archaeology banaras hindu university she is also an author of a book called a socio cultural study of foreign dynasties an epigraphical approach and dr devara konda reddy he is the Uh, he was the professor of uh, department he was the professor in department of epigraphy now retired uh, from kannada uni kannada university hampi karnataka dr s swaminathan he retired as uh, deputy superintending epigraphist archaeological survey of india mysore he had edited and contributed to several volumes of south indian inscriptions and uh, our own uh, mr sridharan he retired as a deputy superintending archaeologist from department of archaeology tamil nadu government this jury in fact chose dr krishnamurthy as a person most fit to receive this prestigious award <coughs> karnataka like uh, several states in india was formed by merging areas under the administration of madras bombay presidency and mysore and nizam states efforts to document the wealth of inscriptions in both tamil and kannada speak kannada speaking places started in late 19th century but largely remained an individual effort asi was formed in 1861 and the epigraphy department was started in 1883 thus the systematic and institutionalized attempt to collect record document and uh, document interpret and publish inscription started only from 1883 it was inevitable that few languages and scripts took uh, uh, but the reign of asi and epigraphy branch covered essentially places ruled by the british it was uh, inevitable that few languages and scripts took precedence over others however some of the princely state were also matching strides with the british one of the progressive princely state like mysore had someone like b l rice uh, incidentally he was also born in the year of in the month of july he was born he was born on 17th july and he died in died on 10th july a self taught genius in fact the b l rice in fact compared to hulsh b l rice was born and brought up in bangalore and like in fact hulsh was born in uh germany and then studied in germany so he was a self taught genius who promoted uh, kannada epigraphy official career in epigraphy of both b l rice and hulsh started around the same time in 1886 hulsh retired in 1903 and rice in 1906 rice brought about 12 volumes of epigraphy of karnataka consisting of about 8869 inscriptions the difference between uh, epigraphy of karnataka and in fact south indian uh, inscriptions is that south indian inscriptions are classified in fact uh, dynastically whereas this epigraphy of karnataka was classified uh, regionally in fact so each location like you know bangalore urban bangalore rural all like so they are uh, uh, organized geographically so therefore regardless of the language and the script every inscription found in a particular location would appear in the epigraphia karnataka 
It's a very interesting, in fact, okay, aspect of the epigraphy of Karnataka was that it would be, suppose if they found a, find a Tamil inscription, it will be given in Tamil script and its transliteration in Roman script also will be given and the meaning of the uh, inscription also will be given. Something different from what, in fact, SII was uh, organized. So, his good work was continued by Narasimha Char and M. H. Krishna. Probably we can say Mr. Narasimha Char was, uh, was to rise as uh, Venkaya was to Hulsh. The number of inscriptions found in, in India vary vastly from one expert to another. According to one of their works of Noboru Karashima and Dr. Y. Superailu, the number is about 60,000. Of course, this was published way back in 2001 in one of their uh, papers. But many people say the number of inscriptions in India are about a lakh. Okay. But I am in fact you know, quoting from the uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, scholars in fact, okay, sources. Therefore, the idea of quoting this is just to, in fact, just to uh, indicate how important the Kannada epigraphy is. In fact. So in their in fact, uh, uh, analysis, they had said 28,000 Tamil inscription, 11,000 Kannada inscription, so they constitute 47 percent of the total inscriptions found in India and 18 percent of the total inscription found in India are from Kannada, are of Kannada's uh, language. So even if we were to trust a claim of one lakh inscription, Kannada inscription will still take the second place after the Tamil inscriptions. Now to Dr. Krishna, Krishnamurti. He was born in 1951 in a place called Samanduru, Anigal district which is not too far from Tamil Nadu. I was told that he can even read uh, Tamil uh, inscriptions. Dr. P. V. Krishnamurti, or he is called P. V. K. or Dr. P. V. K. as he is fondly called, did his post-graduation in Canada from the University of Mysore. Additionally, he obtained a diploma in mechanical engineering, joined Indian Aeronautics Limited and retired as an engineer. So his, in fact, um, uh, Occupation is not an epigraphist, in fact, his occupation for till he retired was an engineer in uh, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. He, in the year 2000, I think he was still working in HAL, isn't it? Uh, he earned his uh, PhD from Canada University, Hampi, for his study on the inscriptions of Bana Kings. Somehow, in fact, a lot of coincidences in this, uh, uh, in this, uh, in the, in the choice of the winner as well as the uh, choice of the month in which we wanted to hold this meeting because per probably the last of the research article wrote by Venkaya was on the five Bana inscriptions from Gudimallam. Five Bana inscriptions from Gudimallam and probably he in fact took on from Venkaya's in fact initiative and developed that uh, concept and made it into a PhD thesis. So this uh, ba five Bana inscription from Gudimalam was published in Epigraphia Indica, volume 11, which was published after he died. And this volume was dedicated to the memory of Venkaya by Hulsh. Dr. Uh, PVK has been teaching epigraphy under the aegis of uh, Canada Sahitya Parishad for many years now. When I asked him how long he had been teaching epigraphy, he says 40 years and been a honorary lecturer in manuscriptology in IGNCA, Indira Gandhi National uh, <coughs> Center for Arts, Bangalore and PM Sri Pratishtana. Many epigraphists and enthusiasts, young and old alike, consider Dr. PVK as not only their mentor but friend too. Many of his students credit his patient and demystifying approach as reason for their abiding interest in epigraphy. He also teaches Kannada to non kannadigas under the Government of Karnataka program. One of the foremost epigraphers in Karnataka now, Dr. PVK's research is considered of exceptional quality, often serving as a standard by which others are measured. His deep understanding of the multilingual and interstate approach to studying history is remarkable. In fact, this is perhaps what, what our uh, pioneers did, in fact, like Hulsh or Venkaya or B.L. Rice. B.L. Rice was supposed to be, in fact, okay, he knew, in fact, four or five or six languages, uh, Telugu, Kannada, Tamil, Sanskrit, English, and even Venkaya also knew, in fact, half a dozen languages. 
Recognizing the significance of this perspective, he has emerged as one of the few historians who comprehends its critical role in unraveling the history of different regions. He has authored several books on various subjects such as epigraphy, history, travelogue. Some of his well-known books are Banarasara Sashanagalu Undu Adhyayana. Hope I am uh, pronouncing it correctly. A study of the Bana dynasty inscription. Tamil Nadu Nina Kannada Sashanagalu. Uh, that's the topic on which he is going to speak today. Kannada inscription of Tamil Nadu. And uh, he has also written books on uh, temples and inscriptions of Bembur, Ishwarasthana, an introduction. Bembur is nothing but Begur. Uh, and he has also written an uh, ancient history of Anekal Taluk and written a, um, a book on Veerashaiva royal families of Suguturu. Suguturu, uh, the, the Veerashaiva families, they uh, served under uh, Vijayanagara kings. Vindhya and Narmadeena, um, that is uh, in the land of the Vindhya and Narmada, a travelogue. Shashana Mantana and Shashana Idihasana Mantana, collection of research articles in inscription and history. He has edited 19 volumes of Itihasa Darshana, which are the proceedings of the seminar and research papers for the Karnataka Itihasa Academy. In addition, he has created an author article index for the publication. Furthermore, he has edited volume 4 of the Kannada University inscriptions. He has written more than 170 articles, papers in different research journals, felicitation volumes, commemoration volumes, and in encyclopedia, encyclopedia volumes, etc. Some of the awards that he had received are Dr. B. R. Ragopo, B. R. Gopal Epigraphy Award by Kannada Itihas Academy in year 2010, Kannada Sahitya Sammelana Award in 2010, Idihasa Samaskriti Shri Award by Kan Karnataka Idihasa Academy for the year 2021, and now the coveted V. Venkaya Award. Thank you. Now I call upon uh, Professor Swaminathan uh, Sri and Gopal Swami to come to the stage and hand over the award to Krishnamurti. Yeah.
Um, Shri N. Gola, Shri N. Gopal Sami will speak for a... Uh, Namaskaram. Namaskaram to one and all. Professor Saminathan, Professor PVK, and uh, the invited audience who is total passionate about uh, history and uh, uh, epigraphy. I am really delighted to be with you today because the existence of such a uh, group of people <coughs> uh, who were, I mean, started by Professor Swaminathan and uh, four others, uh, it comes as a surprise. I mean, uh, epigraphy and such subjects are um, not everybody's cup of tea. But to create an abiding interest on such matters is something uh, you know remarkable and I must congratulate the trust as well as Professor Swaminathan and his colleagues for what they have done in the last uh, dozen years. Uh, I have a small mm, you know mm. connection with this as uh, was mentioned earlier. <coughs> the uh, period I spent in the Ministry of Culture at that time for a couple of years and to my mind was one of my best periods because uh, number one we had stopped making proposals to the World Heritage Committee for incorporation of uh, Indian uh, sites into the World Heritage for almost about five seven years we had stopped and uh, it, uh, it was my good fortune that I could uh, restart it restarted in the first year itself we had the first one which after restarting was the um, uh, prehistoric paintings at Bimbetka near uh, Bhopal the, the second one uh, uh, of course the next year we had the uh, built monuments these two <coughs> three Ganga Kunda Chodaparam, Daraswaram and uh, Champanir they came in and very interesting, uh, I will just share that one uh, small bit of. Couple of months after I became uh, Secretary of Culture, I went to the World Heritage Committee in Paris for their meeting. And uh, <coughs> in that meeting, you know, everything is political, you know. So, the politics of the Western uh, world, they had almost exhausted all their monuments. So, uh, but they didn't want others to uh, put their monuments in. So there was fought in one restriction, only one built monument for every country. You can't make more than one proposal. The previous years you would see uh, many of these Western countries uh, sending half a dozen proposals and getting getting them approved. Then they all added something on that that there should be a uh, proposal. Apart from the monument, there should be a proposal for management. There is a management uh, uh, issues you must raise and then how you will manage it after <coughs> the monument is taken into the world heritage. That is an added uh, and to make matters more difficult. Normally every year, April first week is the last date for filing your uh, uh, you know, proposals. They changed all this one per country and then brought down the time from April first week to first of February. So in every which way, they were trying to restrict. And uh, when I came back and uh, my uh, I had I had the good fortune of serving under 
one of the most remarkable ministers, uh, Mr. Jagmohan, a very fine person. I mean, I have no words to describe his abilities or his uh, vision and so on. So I uh, produce a note to him saying that at this relevant point of time, the number of monuments in the world heritage list in India is 18. Europe minus Russia plus UK had 180 monuments in their uh, in the world heritage list. And India can easily be compared to those uh, things. And then we would have um, far more than 180 uh, monuments. So first restriction was only one per uh, country, one built monument, one natural uh, site. And they, since they had exhausted all their um, uh, monuments, they added a new category, industrial sites. Now fortunately for us, we had a very fine uh, IFS officer in uh, Paris, uh, accredited to uh, World Heritage Committee. She fought and then said, the first time when you are changing all this, you can't reduce the time limit from April to February. So they accepted it. And fortunately again for us, and the um, Deccan College of um, Deccan College in Pune had prepared a complete documentation on uh, Bimbetka. So I could we could get hold of that. Just make the uh, limited modifications for presentation, plus the question of adding the administrative uh, structure. And there again, the uh, the then uh, secretary to the chief minister then, one Mr. Sudha, uh, Mr. Gopalakrishnan, he got it done 15 days, get all the sarpanchas to make a resolution, then pass a resolution, their assemblies, call the assemblies and pass a resolution. Then uh, with all that, we could submit it and we could get, get it through. <coughs> one loophole they, meant, they kept, that loophole was that if there is any monument already in the World Heritage Site, then you can add to it, I mean, those contemporary to it, um, you can add without any number. And that is how Darasuram and uh, Gangekavadu Chodapuram came in, being uh, the same Chola uh, period uh, monuments. So, um, the kind of, so, World Heritage Committee is not looking into heritage, it looks more into politics. <laughs> <coughs> then um, the question of, then they had started, you know, very, very interestingly, a Japanese became, when he became uh, the chairman of the World Heritage Committee, he thought of the oral heritage, which is prevalent more in the uh, East and Southeast Asia. So he brought in the concept of um, the uh, uh, you know recognition of world oral heritages. The first one to be done from India was the before I joined was the uh, Kodiyattam, the only extant Sanskrit theatre in in the country um, from Kerala. And uh, for the next years, when I joined the next year's uh, thing, so I proposed because I had just seen. A beautiful um, uh, documenta documentary prepared by uh, All India Radio on the way the Vedic chanting is preserved. I mean, the methodology by which orally it is preserved for thousands of years. Uh, very impressive. About just about ten minutes of uh, that um, uh, thing prepared by the AR. So I went to my minister, uh, Mr. Murli Maharaj Joshi, and said. Uh, I propose to have this oral, uh, into the oral heritage, the proposal for uh, the Vedic chanting. Uh, he said, yes, why, why should you come to me and ask me for this? I said, sir, you know the politics behind it will be there. So, <laughs> I am right now telling you that uh, uh, if there is any politics, you will have to ensure that uh, you know it is met. He said, all right, go ahead, no problem. We presented it not as a Hindu, this thing and all that. We presented it for the methodology of preservation. And it is remarkable. It is remarkable how the uh, the way it has been uh, done, uh, six, seven different ways by which the um, uh, devised, by which the it gets into your memory. It takes about seven years for a student to memorize the entire, uh, his own shaka of Veda takes about seven years of memory. 
and uh, some of those examinations are remarkable you know they will just take one word out of when, when they are examined they take one word out of that entire say let's say you are a shukla yajurveda uh, student take one word somewhere and ask you to recite from that point and uh, you have to be i mean absolutely thorough if our uh, same way you know there are uh, in sanskrit um, uh, you know examinations in, in the traditional sanskrit uh, university traditional sanskrit patsharas etc there is something called a shalaka examination so from the book they will just take a piece of wood and put it in any page at random in the book so the student comes and then he has the book with the shalaka inside the piece of wood he is asked to open it and then from that particular point he has to read it and explain so uh, how you are uh, i mean knowledge understanding memory not for nothing that the western world has now discovered that if you teach sanskrit early your memory gets uh, much sharper so i had the good fortune of being associated uh, on the national manuscript mission again there was very little time left you know i must tell you a small story behind it um somebody from sanskrit bharati came to me i, I knew him because we, we were both working in uh, propagation of sanskrit he came to me and said um, uh, many manuscripts they are not been attended to so we should do something about it new scheme has to be uh, done in the normal course a new scheme would mean you prepare a scheme get it approved by your minister get it approved by the finance uh, ministry then it is sent to the planning commission planning commission has a look at it accepts it not accepts it with or without cuts then it comes in the next year's budget so uh, you start something now by february if it is you are lucky it gets into the uh, into the budget and then the next year you will start we didn't have that much of time to lose and since that we decided we wanted to have it very quickly so what is the way well, of course there are uh, the uh, ways of doing it uh, one of the ways of doing it is, is you get it introduced into the speech of the prime minister when he delivers it from the red fort so this is as good as appro- approval okay nobody then dares to say no to it so we had just about a month and we prepared a small note got hold of the right people and ensured that it was incorporated in the speech of the prime minister uh, 2002 july august i joined in uh, 2001 july 2001 august 15th the prime minister announced it and became uh, accepted program and nobody then will dare to say no so they all so in fact <coughs> more than administration is more politics in the <laughs> higher levels of administration so that was i mean if there is a small um, connection i have with uh, today's uh, function it is this that i enjoyed being uh, being in that ministry and whatever little i could do but the work is enormous i must say that you know somebody mentioned about uh, mamallapuram how it has been uh, done up i think this one might have been done up well earlier but during jagmohan's period he really got all these places done up so very well so with deep understanding <coughs> of the subject of the place of its history he uh, remarkably turned around uh, many of these monuments to places where i wish <coughs> tirunelveli people did not object to it tirunelveli he had taken tirunelveli also the objection actually came from all those <coughs> all those people who have illegally occupied and then created shops and all that stuff uh, not because you know there was any genuine uh, and he would have he would have ensured that alternative uh, uh, accommodation was given and for their uh, livelihood but they didn't allow him to work mahabalipuram he would have he would have not, if anybody had seen mahabalipuram prior to 2002 2003 and what it was transferred uh, transformed into subsequently we'll know what kind of uh, vision and drive he had um thank you so much for calling me and in, in fact in the life of uh, Uh, venkaya is so remarkable i mean it's it's uh, your your own history brought alive through the inscri- inscriptions and by a person who possibly never had any inkling of uh, of getting into that job an uh, accidental uh, epigraphist so and of course mr uh, 
Krishnamurti, today's uh, awardee. There's one thing um, I, in passing, I'm just mentioning, no. Uh, how is it that all engineers are getting into this? <laughs> there he is, and there he is. So, um, <clears throat> and we should have more such people get, getting into it and doing it. It is, it's unfortunately, it is, um, it's not really a sought after uh, subject. But I suppose even if you're an engineer, a medicine man, etc., etc., there is no limit to acquiring knowledge. So if that, uh, with that uh, uh, approach people get into it, then I'm quite sure we'll have more people to at least um, say we have an interest in preserving our history. Thank you so much for calling me. All the best. Now I invite. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Venkatesh, uh, he would like to uh, give a small moment to Sri and Gopalaswami. Now, I invite Dr. P. V. Krishnamurti to deliver his uh, talk on Kannada inscriptions in Tamil Nadu. Very thankful to Tamil Parampari Arakatalai, that is Tamil Heritage Trust. Uh, I don't know how I am selected for this award, I don't know. <laughs> but actually, <laughs> that is different. <laughs> uh, always, uh, uh, stage fear is there. I never come for lectures and all those things. I will read only papers reading that is there. Well, I like that <laughs> things are there. Uh, here, uh, this award is in the name of Rai Bahudur V. Venkaya. Uh, in 1890, Dr. Wolf's uh, opinion like this about him, V. Venkaya like this. I was fortunate enough to have an able and efficient helpmate in my assistant. Mr. V. Venkaya, who promised to do ex excellent work in the field of South Indian epigraphy. Further, he opined that 
it is to be note it is to be hoped that other young native graduates will follow on mr venkayas lines and and take up the neglected subject of south india south indian epigraphy the records are so numerous and so many intricate historical questions have still be solved that there is room for a large numbering independent qualified workers uh, this is a uh, opinion of the holes about uh, uh, venkaya and what the young sub uh, younger, uh, younger generation has to do in those 100 years ago you opinion uh, it's what good even today <laughs> uh, uh, actually uh, this field is like that uh, if a government or any organization started to do this it is only a uh, job of payment like that it will happen Uh, no interview it's only payment jobs that's it but only like my uh, like me amateurs will do some little work the same thing is happened through otp survey the things most of the epical studies are done by the hobby people only by hobby that is natural and it is only self interest that's all if university tell so uh, there is no any interest on the subject they will take the salary and simply sit and go like that it will happen here and there some scholars are there like uh, our uh, subrailu are taking a lot of their own interest and doing and kv ramesh those are all uh, not worked for salary they did for the like that <laughs> very rare even up in uh, archaeological department uh, we saw they worked for only salary after that they never do any work and even on the uh, in service also they will put their names whatever their uh, assistants had did it's a very common in uh, uh, yeah yeah in uh, departments some assistant will do the work but uh, department head pull his name he, uh, he telling that he is product like that when a question is asked him that head he don't know anything he never work uh, simply his name is there on the book such things are all happening in government uh, organizations uh, now uh i will sp- read my lecture this is kannada inscriptions in tamil nadu uh, uh tamil nadu means it is geographically now it is uh, divided for that but in the ancient days not like that some geographical boundaries are very that's what we can uh, trace that uh, how it is different or low by the study of the inscriptions we can really study my paper will clearly indicates that inscriptions are the main sources to reconstruct the political social economic history of our country even today the study of inscriptions of our country is not been done properly it is necessary that the documentation of all authentic and comprehensive source material of all regions and languages without any flaw is essential such documentation will immensely help us to take up any micro studies in any desired pattern a regional study is the first step in this regard it is not unusual for the inscriptions in any one language to be found in another language region for example we find such inscriptions at famous pilgrimage places like banaras kanchi srirangam rameshwaram tiruvannamalai sri shailam shravana belagola etc but in general we find earlier inscriptions in its native language of that particular region he there were no other strong political or cultural pressures they would continue to build up in the reason unabated like unabated likewise the language and culture naturally existed in that reason and the place names place names are more important the place names personal names and even the pop rituals that have survived as puzzles in the reason prove that point at present the northwest boundaries of tamil nadu 
which is adjacent to the present day karnataka or reasons where we will where, where we will see such cultural pacts exist still even today where hundreds of kannada inscriptions can be seen standing up as symbols of bravery glory and sacrifice and devotion of ancient karnataka kings a book named karnataka shasanagala samikshe a review of karnataka inscriptions by dr k v ramesh reveals the availability of kannada inscriptions in tamil nadu apart from the many details mentioned in this book not much study seems to have been done further regarding maharashtra dr mm kalburgis kannada inscriptions of maharashtra is remarkable in one sense this work has inspired me to take up study of kannada inscription in tamil nadu subsequently my article titled written in kannada kannada inscriptions of tamil nadu in an overall view overview kannada inscription of tamil nadu border province adjoining karnataka ab and devadanas of vijayanagara empires and veer shaiva inscriptions of tamil nadu were published in journals and felicitation volumes recently dr k r ganesha his phd thesis on kannada inscriptions of andhra pradesh has also been published all these studies have shown that the geographical boundaries and sphere of cultural influence of ancient karnataka were vast presently a humble attempt is made here to bring together the details scattered in my separate articles on tamil nadu kannada inscriptions mentioned above here suitably adopted revised and expanded to introduce the nature and significance of them source what uh, source material how i got source material. a glance at the annual reports of the inscriptions and the epigraphical volumes of south india reveals that hundreds of kannada inscriptions have originated in the border region of tamil nadu adjoining karnataka starting from the ganga period till very recent times since about 1850 ce many books and articles have been published covering the kannada inscriptions of tamil nadu and their details etc a brief introduction to this is given below several inscriptions were noticed by robert sewell in lists of antiquarian remains in presidency of madras and list of inscriptions and sketches of dynasties of southern india works in both these works the details have been incorporated according to district and taluk and uh, Uh, the parallelly many surveys are also happened e etiology it and secondly the details of many kannada inscriptions have been recorded in summaries in the annual reports published by the epigraphic branch of government of india since 1889 the annual reports from 1889 to 1920 contain only one line of di- details of the inscriptions at the respective places but no satisfactory information about the language content of the script etc the subsequent annual reports give satisfactory details of these as far as possible even so due to differences in district taluks and confusions in names some points are wrong however this can be corrected on the strength of other governments many of the inscriptions included in these reports have been published in the volumes of south indian inscriptions epigraphia karnataka which are published per which are the publications of the epigraphy branch of the archaeological survey of india the inscriptions once noticed in the annual reports were published as new inscription in some subsequent publications while publishing in this way they do not mention the fact that they are noticed in the annual reports sometimes due to confusion entries are made twice in the same volumes 
and wrongly mentioned the language etc generally speaking rather than texts and summaries printed in various publications the texts and details published in annual reports of indian epigraphy south indian inscriptions and epigraphia indica are more authoritative and satisfactory is that uh, central government publications uh, far better than other publications they are maintained some standard all a three volume work title a topographical list of the inscriptions in madras presidency prepared and published by v ragava rangacharya in 1919 is very helpful for the study which records the summaries of the inscriptions referred on the works of robert sewell annual reports of indian epigraphy and also his field work these volumes are very useful as these are recorded according to the district and taluk wise fourth point a volume containing the text of the kannada inscriptions in tamil nadu is from the kannada university ampi where only 145 inscriptions have been published it should be noted that 60% of the names of district taluks and places where the respective inscriptions are found are wrongly recorded recorded throughout the volume leave it i, I too was one of the editor for the volume but uh, there is lot of uh, mistakes in district taluks and the place names and all those things uh, okay is <laughs> not though it is uh, it's, uh, mistakes to happen part uh, one of the person three three editors are there out of that i, I myself also one editor but there is lot of problems that is the out of all uh, volumes published by the kannada university it we have to give the last place to it <laughs> properly not edited myself including uh, some leave it some kannada inscriptions have been published in volumes rashtrakuta inscriptions in the tamil country published by kannada university mp under the editorship of s swaminathan in this rashtrakuta means the inscriptions of the krishna third this is the most important epigraphy volume to know about the dominance of karnataka kings over tamil nadu some of the conclusions in the introduction to this do not seem to satisfactory that is swaminathan's uh, introduction i may not agree let it be but it is a good volume to study and all those things however this is an important volume that provides basic material for study apart from the above mentioned publications some inscriptions have been published in many places like pel station and commemoration volumes etc details of these are not easily available in one place even the details in these are not fully satisfactory there is also confusion uh what uh, my paper some uh, some limitations also i will uh, tell my into a review of this inscription of the nilgiris europe coimbatore kristagiri dharmapuri selam districts uh, of present day tamil nadu adjoining mysore chamrajnagar ramanagara bengaluru and kolar district of the present day karnataka especially of the europe and coimbatore and nilgiri regions has not been done adequately even today uh, we have not come across more inscriptions uh, from that area uh, that is a uh, erode coimbatore and nilgiri regions the volumes of us uh, that is published so far a look at the annual reports will make this clear if we go through the annual reports of indian epigraphy south indian inscriptions and epigraphy indica volumes we find hundreds of kannada inscriptions in the boundary districts uh, from the earliest period to the present day and apart from that several kannada inscriptions found all over the tamil nadu in tamil nadu so far more than 350 kannada inscriptions have been noticed out of which more kannada inscriptions are found in krishnagiri and dharmapuri districts say about 215 in numbers it accounts for roughly 66% of total kannada inscriptions which are in this in the in this boundary district only the remaining inscriptions are mostly in the holy places and temples of 
காஞ்சிபுரம் கோயம்புத்தூர் கடலூர் தஞ்சாவூர் திருப்பூர் திருவள்ளூர் நாகப்பட்டினம் மதுரை விழுப்புரம் திருவநெல்வேலி திருவண்ணாமலை நாமக்கல் புதுக்கோட்டை அண்ட் வெல்லூர் டிஸ்ட்ரிக்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் தமிழ்நாடு டிஸ்ட்ரிபியூஷன் அவ் திஸ் இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் டிஸ்ட்ரிபியூட்டட் அவுட் ஆஃப் ஆல் த இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் சாளுக்யா ஆஃப் பாதாமி இஸ் ஒன் இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் இஸ் ஃபவுண்ட் இன் கஞ்சி அண்ட் கங்கா டைனஸ்டி பிலாங்ஸ் டு கங்கா லெவன் இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் தேர் பானாஸ் த்ரீ இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் நொரம்பாஸ் டுவெண்ட்டி எயிட் இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் திஸ் ஆர் ஆல் இன் வித் இன் டென்த் சென்ச்சுரி அண்ட் ராஷ்டிரகூட்டாஸ் த்ரீ மோர் தென் ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் நைன் இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் தேர் ராஷ்டிரகூட்டாஸ் இன் தமிழ்நாடு பட் கன்னடா இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் ஓன்லி த்ரீ இன் ரிமைனிங் ஆர் ஆல் தமிழ் இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் தட் இஸ் டு பிலாங்ஸ் டு தி ராஷ்டிரகூட்டா கிங் மும்மொழி அந்த ராஷ்டிர த ராஷ்டிரகூட்டா கிருஷ்ணா தர்டு தென் சோழாஸ் ஓன்லி த்ரீ கன்னடா இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் தேர் இன் திஸ் ரீசன் தேர் ஆர் லாட் ஆஃப் வெரி சோழா இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் தமிழ் பட் த்ரீ கன்னடா இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் தேர் இன் திஸ் தமிழ்நாடு செல் வைசலா டென் இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் மோர் தென் ஒன் தௌசண்ட் வைசலா இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் அவைலபிள் இன் தமிழ்நாடு பட் தேர் கன்னடா இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் ஓன்லி டென் சிமிலர்லி ராஷ்டிரகூட்டாஸ் ஆல்சோ மோர் தென் ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் நைன் பட் கன்னடா இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஓன்லி த்ரீ விஜயநகர் இட்ஸ் போர் செவன்டி ஃபோர் இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் தேர் விஜயநகர் அண்ட் மைசூர் டைனஸ்டி ஒண்டர்ஃபுல் பார்ட்டி இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் மைசூர் இஸ் எ லேட்டர் டோட்டல் ஒன் செவன்டி ஃபோர் இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் பிலாங்ஸ் டு தி டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டைனஸ்டிஸ் வி கேன் ஐடென்டிஃபை பர்டிகுலர் பிலாங்ஸ் டு தி பர்டிகுலர் டைனஸ்டிஸ் இன் மிஸ்லேனியஸ் கேஸ் எபவுட் தேர்ட்டி சிக்ஸ் ஆர் ஹீரோ ஸ்டோன்ஸ் இட் இஸ் டிஃபிகல்ட் டு அசைன் டு விச் டைனஸ்டி அர்லி இட் ஆர் ஆல் தோஸ் ஹீரோ ஸ்டான்ஸ் ஆர் ஆல் அர்லி ஸ்பேஸ் தட் இஸ் பிஃபோர் டென்த் சென்ச்சுரி ஐ தர் இட் மே பிலாங்ஸ் டு தி கங்கா டைனஸ்டி ஆர் நொலம்பாஸ் மோஸ்ட் ப்ராபபலி நொலம்பாஸ் ஐ திங்க் பட் இப்போ தெர் இஸ் நோ இண்டிகேஷன் ஆஃப் கிங் இப் கிங் கிங்ஸ் ஆர் இஸ் ஆஃபீஸர்ஸ் இண்டிகேஷன் இஸ் தென் வி கேன் அசைன் டு இஸ் டைனஸ்டி பட் நத்திங் இஸ் தேர் இட் இஸ் மிஸ்லேனியஸ் பட் ஹீரோ ஸ்டோன் தட் இஸ் மோ தட் இஸ் மோர் ஹீரோ ஹீரோ ஸ்டோன்ஸ் ஆர் அவைலபிள் இன் பவுண்ட்ரி ஏரியா தட் இஸ் டூ பிலாங்ஸ் டு தி கங்கா அண்ட் நொலம்பாஸ் அண்ட் இன் ரிமைனிங் அல் ஆல் வி கேன் புட் இட் இன் மிஸ்லேனியஸ் தட் ஹண்ட்ரட் இன்ஸ்கிரிப் ஹண்ட்ரட் இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் தே தெர் இஸ் நோ மென்ஷன் ஆஃப் டேட் ஆர் பிளே டேட் ஆர் கிங் ஆர் எனிதி இயர் வி நோட்டீஸ் தட் த கன்னடா இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் விஜயநகர் ஆர் மோர் இன் நம்பர் எபவுட் செவன்டி ஃபோர் பட் இந்த அர்லியர் பீரியட் நொலம்பா ஓவர் தி பிடேட்டரிஸ் ஆஃப் தி கங்கா டைனஸ்டி ஆர் ஆல்சோ கவுண்டபிள் பட் தட் இஸ் டுவெண்ட்டி எயிட் இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் இன் தமிழ்நாடு மோர் தென் தௌசண்ட் வயசுலா இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் அவைலபிள் பட் தேர் கன்னடா இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் லெஸ் தென் லெஸ் இன் நம்பர் தட் இஸ் ஓன்லி டென் இன் த செவன்டீன்த் அண்ட் எயிட்டீன் சென்ச்சுரிஸ் த கன்னடா இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் மைசூர் கிங்ஸ் ஆர் ரிமார்க்கபிள் பார்ட்டி இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் தேர் belong to mysore kings especially in the boundary districts that is uh, up from to salem dharmapuri krishnagiri and coimbatore that area political significance of these inscriptions politically kannada inscriptions of tamil nadu trace the reign of chalukya chalukya ganga bana punnata alupa rashtrakuta nolamba kodambalur pedatory lords chola Chalukya of Kalyana, Vaisala, Vijayanagara and Mysore kings. Also many other inscriptions shed light on the rule of Karnataka royal families over many regions of Tamil Nadu for several years. Uh, the Chalukyas of Badami inscription. In Tamil Nadu, Chalukya Vikramadityas, Karnada inscription of the 7th century is the earliest one which referred already above where when the identification identification of vikramaditya is still a matter of debate although in my opinion the vikramaditya the first is the immadi pulikesi son only 
in this inscription we find the name of two officers namely vallabha durjaya and anivarita vallabha these are the titles of the or maikirtis of vikramaditya first no doubt several expeditions were taken place against pallavas during the period of immadi vikramaditya also and similar expeditions against pallavas have continued even in the early rashtrakuta period also uh, regarding uh, ganga sasnas ganga the inscriptions of ganga the earliest inscriptions of the pontair belonging to the ganga family as mentioned earlier it was the gangas who stood up for the protection of karnataka so that southern karnataka would not merge with the kingdoms of tamilers who were strong in the south he has acquired special political skill and has successfully part in alliances and war situations time and time again with great success because of that most of the south Kar- south karnataka remained an acha kannada state as samyak prajapalana matradigata rajya prakashya prakashyasya andre the people's welfare was the yardstick of the gangas government there are about 12 kannada inscriptions of gangas found in tamil nadu which belonging to the shivamara first uh, sri purusha and shivamara second rachamalla and yereganga neeti marga and rachamalla second and marasimha second uh, then neeti marga permanadi two inscriptions mentioning the administration of shivamara are found in machinaikana halli of osur taluk and gangavara of krishnagiri taluk these two undated inscriptions only record the death of two heroes in a cattle ride and hence the political aspect of the period cannot be made out and it is also difficult to identify the shivamara mentioned recently shivamaras one more kannada inscription noticed at krishnagiri which is also a hero stone mentions the hero who fought against the enemy as yerevasa yerevasa here the word yerevasa is important it is a rare word it appears only in one other inscription but it is in the rannas rannas sahasa bhima vijayam telling that a real hero will be part in the situation like thurugolol penbuyalol yerevesadol nantara nantara nadarol uralivinolam tarisandu gandam tana mane nare ka ka gandu tana mane nare padavam gandanalla dentu shandam that means turugol uh, means cattle uh, right penbuyal means uh, it is uh, we can call it uh, in trouble for uh, this cattle right and uh, the shout of women uh, uh, shout means a uh, penny uh, uh, enemies uh, they they may insult the ladies at the time they may sh- shout that is called pen buyal wheel means sh- sh- sound pen means pen that is a wheel that's like that in the this situations only uh, re- reasons to part against the enemies like that uh, Our, our one of the famous kannada poet uh, ranna told in his one of the uh, poem that there the word yeravesa is there it's a rare word and one inscription in chikkamagalur district is yeravesa is used then no other words find anywhere but in tamil nadu that is to the krishnagiri museum that inscription is available yeravesa word is there in erostu that is really it's a rare uh, uh, thing no yeravesa is in literature it is available inscriptions are very rare only one out of all uh, karnataka area we find one in chikkamagalur district but now it is a one in, uh, instance is there in uh, tamil nadu that is more important yeravesa here 
द वर्ड यरे वैसा कन्सिस्ट ऑफ टू पार्ट्स यरे प्लस वैसा यरे मीन्स यरे मीन्स ओनर मास्टर लॉर्ड यरे मीन्स ओनर मास्टर लीडर वैसा मीन्स वर्क ड्यूटी आर्डर एनक्वयर एक्सेट्रा देन वी कैन कंक्लूड दैट ए पर्सन वो पाइट्स टू सैक्रिफाइस हिमसेल्फ फॉर द सेक ऑफ इज मास्टर इज मास्टर आर इज लॉर्ड अरे स्वामी कार्य is called yerevesa the text of the inscription is given below i will read the text of the uh, what we are pointed in uh, krishnagiri now it is placed in uh, it is the museum swasti sri yeregangar gangaru saasiramanaale sobuda magan malangan yerevesa dol yeredu vildan year it is a old kind of old estate kind of it is uh, before uh, 7th century so that it uh, years like tamil is it <laughs> it's not modern kerala only it is oldest kerala swasti yare gangar gangaru saasiramanaale sabada magan malangan yare vasadol yare du vildan like that the tamil nadu in tamil nadu there are a total of about seven inscriptions belonging to shivamara are available Out of which five are written in hotel. So total, I am telling, including Tamil inscriptions. There, Ganga's many uh, Tamil inscriptions also there. Ganga's and Nolambas, many Tamil inscriptions are there. Here, I uh, take uh, for uh, Shiva Rai. I have taken into other uh, published uh, Tamil inscriptions also, because these are all early inscriptions of seventh century. In that area, there was no even Tamil inscriptions of that period. In Kristigiri or that area. earliest inscriptions are not there even tamil this is the earliest inscriptions 7th century 8th century that is two written in language is tamil that script usually is ottelattu usually in the beginning paleographical study we think that only in pandya nadu and in kerala region ottelattu is using but it is the northern uh, portion of the tamil nadu where ottelattu is there this is a parallel with pallavas that is the question to me <laughs> here i discuss these things in tamil nadu there are told i do tamil language shivamaras are available out of which five are written in ottelattu script and tamil language and they are found at uh, navile uh, kattarsan patti talu arur taluk kattarsan patti uh, mayandi patti ottam patti and vardhan patti the place is where we get the shivamaras inscriptions one has to observe that the use of the local language in these zero stone inscriptions and also all are in 7th century ottalattu scripts that means it confirms that the real tamil script is ottalattu real tamil script is ottalattu but not the one we are using now the what what we are using tamil script is not the one original it's the later pages the script now we are using is the gift of imperial cholas so that we may call it the chola tamil scripts what we are using present day it is derived from chola the chola tamil scripts not earlier to that which was initiated from the vijayalaya's time onwards not earlier to that after the rule of shivamara his grandson sri purusha ruled from 726 to 788 during his time gangavadi was at the height of its glory sri purusha is credited with uh, saving the kannada kingdom by stopping the pallavas at the border of the ganga kingdom here he wore the title of konguni rajadi raja raja parameshwara sri purusha he is credited with saving gangavadi from the invention of pallavas and rashtrakutas by fighting relentlessly there are two sri purusha inscriptions which are at palaypete and selam palaypete inscription mentions a devaboga grant of garden land to Vira Deva Acharya, or that is maybe Jaina. Vira Deva Acharya, up Vira Sangha, Gana, and created houses. 
ए कॉपर प्लेट इंस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ श्री पुरुषा इज लोकेटेड एट सुकनेश्वरा इन सुकनेश्वरा टेम्पल इन सेलम एंड इट इज नव जनरली पिमिलियर टू एपिग्राफिस्ट इन द नेम ऑफ सेलम कॉपर प्लेट्स इट इज डेटेड शका सिक्स नाइंटी थ्री बद भाद्रपद शुद्ध द्वितीय फ्राइडे करस्पांडिंग टू आगस्ट सिक्सटीन सेवन सेवन वन कामनेरा रिगार्डिंग दईड ऑफ श्री पुरुषा विथ द जीलियालजी फ्रम कोंगणी वर्मा इट गिवस द डिटेल टाइटल्स ऑफ एवरी रूलर द स्कॉलर्स बिलीव दैट कोरमंगल विच ईज मेन्शनड इन द कापर प्लेट्स ऑफ दि सुकनेश्वर टेपल ईज ईडेंटिफाइड विथ कोरमंगल ऑफ तिरचेगोड़ तालूको आप नामकल डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड द पुदूर आप सेम डिस्ट्रिक्ट इज द सेंटर ऑफ पुदुकंड पुदुकुंड पुदुकुंडना देन मारसिंहासन मारसिंहास रूलिंग इज इन टेन्थ से टेन्थ से इज रूलिंग इज नईन सिक्सटी वन टू नईन सेवेंटी फोर का मन वाज वन ऑफ दि लास्ट पवर्फुल किंग ऑफ दि गंगा ड्यूरिंग इज रईन Karnataka is seen to have tried to gain an important place in the politics of Bharata Kanda. He invaded Gujarat on behalf of his ally Rashtrakuta Kannara, that is Krishna Thai. An inscription of one such mighty Maharashtra is in the Gangamma Temple at Ramanayaka Lake in Osur, and mentions Marusudu and Palala City. This is about Ganga inscriptions. then we can come to the chalukyas of badami it's already mentioned uh, the chalukyas of badami is very immense very immense name in the history of the karnataka immidi pulikeshi of the dynasty was a very mighty ruler his fame spread in south india as well as in north india he established his authority over kadamba alupa maurya of konkana gujarat and malavas and prevented and repelled sri harsha of kaduj who who wore the title of sakalottara pateshwara continuing continuing his digvijaya yatra to the south he defeated mahendra varman a pallava of kanchi thus pulikesi's fame spread throughout india and outside the country narasimha varma son of pallava mahendra varma unexpectedly attacked badami soon after his accession and defeated pulikesi pulikesi probably died at this time for about 13 years since then a dark period in the history of the chalukyas pulikesi's third son vikramaditya first who ascended in 655 common era drove the pallavas out of the kingdom and invaded kanchi the pallava capital an inscription illustrating his point is found on a pillar of the rajasingeshwara temple in kanchi kanchi which details vikramaditya's discovery of rajasingeshwara's wealth and his donation to the god given back the uh, whatever he discovered he given back the uh, treasure to the temple historians appear to have attributed this achievement to immadi vikramaditya it is noteworthy that uh, it is noteworthy that he, it is it is noteworthy that because of the script design of the inscription it belongs to the first vikramaditya and also the tiles worn by the officers mentioned in the same inscription are related to the first vikramaditya also the opinion of the scholars who originate originally compiled originally compiled is compiled uh, this inscription is uh, complementary to the is this it was the custom of the time for is uh, these officers to wear title as a mark of their subordination after this uh, victory the chalukyas are seen to have made several expeditions to collect tribute from the pallavas 
this is about uh, chalukyas in the banas the banas who appear in the history of south india from the beginning of christian era ruled kolar kadapa tiruvallam regions where the pallava becomes powerful in the third and fourth century the banas became their mandalikas the kadambas chalukyas of badami gangas nurambas and cholas attacked the banas and made them their subject one of the inscription of banners was found in raikote krishnagiri taluk uh, historians think that he was jayameru of uh, mahabali dynasty according to this inscription it is clear that he had power over many provinces banners as few kannada inscriptions are also found in the olli male katpadi taluk of uh, vellur district one more inscription at uh, muttanooru of the krishnagiri taluk the fact is that this territories were also under the rule of ganga is known from the ganga inscriptions then punnatas uh, the ancient punnata region existed including yegada devana kote and neighboring areas in southern karnataka including many parts of the present day coimbatore district in tamil nadu the history of the punnatas who ruled over this region since ancient time is also uh, shrouded in obscurity during the time of ganga king durvinita it was merged into ganga rajya an inscription supplementing their history was found at komaralingam uh, udumalpete taluk tirupur district formerly a taluk of uh, coimbatore district and is of the great help in reconstructing the genealogy of this family the name of the king starting from ramavarma of kashyapa gotra to ravidatta are mentioned in this inscription ravidatta was the son of skandavarman geographically punnata included a large part of coimbatore district south of the mysore and chamarajnagar districts this region had commercial relations with the Uh, roman empire in the early common era the famous greek geographer geographer ptolemy ptolemy mentions in his writings that the country of punnata was a region of sapphires and emeralds until recently emeralds was found in the many parts of coimbatore district also many roman coins have been found in the area this region was also also has a place in the history of ancient jainism kittur sangha punnata sangha was a society of ethis settled in the nardran gujarat harivamsa purana aap jinasena charya belonging to the punnata sangha is very famous alupasu he calling themselves as soma umshod bavas pandya kula tilakas the alupas ruled over the coastal region of karnataka and many areas on the ghats adjoining it it should be said that they ruled uninterpretedly but in a way independent for about 1200 years under the rule of kadambas chalukya rashtrakutas vaisalas starting with gunasagara called aluvarasa in the vadarasa inscription of the 7th century up to the 1400 common era about 33 kings of the dynasty are recorded in the inscriptions but neither their specific regal nor chronology can be determined with certainty they participated in many wars undertaken by the imperial dynasties as extraordinary heroes and displayed their heroic feats their rule extended to kodagu and kongunadus an inscription detailing that both kitti deva and is patta mahadevi of this lineage purchased land for the service of lord sri ranganatha swami of sri rangam and donated it to a flower garden is a sign of their piti in the sri rangam temple sri rangam temple is a more important because uh, one more 
ಕಲ್ಯಾಣಿ ಚಾಲುಕ್ಯ ಶಾಸನ ಆಲಿಸುವುದೇರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಶಾಸನ ಬಟ್ ರೇರ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೋಲಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಲುಪಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೇರ್ ಒನ್ ಶಾಸನ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ವಿಕ್ರ ವಿಕ್ರಮಾದಿತ್ಯ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಕೂಟ ಸೆಬೌಟ್ ದ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಕೂಟ ಸ್ಯಾಡ್ ದ ಮೆರಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಲೈಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದ ಅಧಿರಾಜಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ವರ್ ನೋ ಎಂಪರರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ದೆಮ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ದ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಕೂಟ ಎಂಪರರ್ಸ್ ಧಾರಾ ವರ್ಷ ಧ್ರುವ ಹು ಕಾಂಕರ್ಡ್ ದಿ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಡಿಪಿಟೆಡ್ ದ ಗುಜರಾತ್ ಪ್ರತಿಹಾರ ರೂಲ್ಡ್ ವತ್ಸರಾಜ ಡಿಪಿಟೆಡ್ ಧರ್ಮಪಾಲ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಲ ಡೈನೆಸ್ಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ಸನ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಪಿಟೆಡ್ ದ ರೂಲರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗುಜರಾತ್ ಕನೋಜ್ ಮಾಳವ ಕೋಸಲ ಕಳಿಂಗ ವೆಂಗಿ ದಹಳ ಓದ್ರಗಂಗಾ ಕೇರಳ ಚೋಳ ಪಾಂಡ್ಯ ಪಲ್ಲವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀಲಂಕಾ ಶ್ರೀಲಂಕನ್ ಪಲ್ಲವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀಲಂಕನ್ ಕಪರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಟ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದ ರೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಸ್ ಸನ್ ಅಮೋಘ ವರ್ಷ ದ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಕೂಟ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ ವಾಸ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಿವ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅರಬ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲರ್ ಸುಲೇಮಾನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫೋರ್ ಓಲ್ಡೆಸ್ಟ್ ಎಂಪರ್ ಎಂಪೈರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಇಮ್ಮಡಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂದ್ರಾ ದ ಇಂದ್ರಾ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ವರ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಅಡ್ವೆಂಚರರ್ಸ್ ಇಂದ್ರಾ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ವೇಡೆಡ್ ಕನೋಜ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪವರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನಾರ್ತರ್ನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ರೋಲ್ ದ ಮುಮ್ಮಡಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹೂ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ದಿ ಥ್ರೋನ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಸಿ ಇ ಕಾಮನೇರ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಕೂಟಾಸ್ ಈ ಡಿಫಿಟೆಡ್ ದ ಚೇದೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ತಾಟ್ ದ ಗುಜರಾತ ಪ್ರತಿಹಾರ ಪ್ರತಿ ಪ್ರತಿಹಾರಾಸ್ ಇ ಅಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಡ್ ದಿ ಚೋಳಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೌತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಫಿಟೆಡ್ ದೆಮ್ ಗಂಗಾ ಡೈನೆಸ್ಟಿ ಭೂತಗ ಹು ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಟಲ್ ಅಟ್ ತಕ್ಕೋಳ ಅಟ್ ತಕ್ಕೋಲ ಕಿಲ್ಡ್ ರಾಜಾದಿತ್ಯ ಸಣ್ಣ ಚೋಳ ಪರಾಂತಕ ಆನ್ ದ ಎಲಿಪೆಂಟ್ ಎಲಿಪೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಸಿ ಇ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಈ ಮಾರ್ಚ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸೌತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎರೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಎ ಪಿಲ್ಲರ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಕ್ಟರಿ ನಿಯರ್ ರಾಮೇಶ್ವರ ಇಟ್ ಟುಕ್ ಎ ಕಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಚೋಳಾಸ್ ಟು ರಿಕವರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೀಸ್ ಶಾಕ್ ದೆನ್ ಮೋರ್ ದೆನ್ ಒನ್ ನಾಟ್ ನೈನ್ ಟ್ಯಾಮಿಲೆಮಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ವೆಲ್ಲೂರ್ ತಿರುವಣ್ಣಾಮಲೈ ಕಾಂಚೀಪುರಂ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಪಾಂಡಿಚೇರಿ ರೀಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಎ ಕನ್ನಡ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗ್ ಟು ದೀಸ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಪೌಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಪೌಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಅಟ್ ಓರಟ್ಟಿ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಮಧುರಾಂತಕಂ ತಾಲೂಕು ಕಾಂಚೀಪುರಂ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಡೆಡಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ದಿ ಗಾಡ್ ಮಾಚೇಶ್ವರ ಬೈ ಎ ಫಿಗರ್ ಪ್ರಾಬಬಲಿ ಎ ರಿಲೇಟಿವ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಚಯ್ಯ ಎ ಟ್ರೆಸರಿ ಆಫೀಸರ್ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್ ಬೈ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಎ ಟ್ಯಾಮಿಲ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಚಯ್ಯ ಎ ಟ್ರೆಸರಿ ಆಫೀಸರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆ್ಯನ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ತಿರುಮಲೈ ಚೇರಿ ಇನ್ ವಾಲಾಜ್ಪೇಟ್ ತಾಲೂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಲ್ಲೂರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆಲ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಕನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ನೇಮ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಕೀರ್ತಿಮಾರ್ ತಂಡ ಎ ಕಲಾಪ್ರಿಯ ದೇವ ಕಾಳಪ್ರಿಯ ದೇವ ದ ಕಾಂದೂರ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ತಿರುಮಲ ಚೇರಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರಹಡ್ ಕಾಪರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆ
and made Jayabe the daughter of Ganga Lord Rachamalla, his daughter-in-law. Palal Chora, who ruled after him, became vassal of Ganga King Nitimarga the first. Gangas defeated the Banas and gave the part of one from them to Nolamba Palal Chora. Palal Chora brought Ganga Princess Gamabe to his son Mahendra the first. This increased the relationship between Nolamba and Ganga. Around 875 CE, uh, Maha Mahendra Raja came to, came to the throne. He completely defeated the Banarasas and got the title Mahabali Kula Vidvamsaka. He also fought against his relatives Ganga of Taluk, Talakadu. And during his time, expanded Nulambavadi. Many inscriptions belonging to his reign have been found in places like Dharmapuri, Motakeri, Aigundam, Puduru, and Machanayakanahalli in Vasur Taluk. His Dharmapuri inscription dated 892 CE details his endowment of a Jaina Basri. Annasandra of the Machanayakanahalli, Dharmapuri Taluk, and Dalappalam inscription of Palavadi, Arur Taluk, Arap, Biyala Chora, and the inscriptions are hero stones related to cattle rights. Another from Dharmapuri belonging to his reign and shed light on the commerce and agriculture of the time. After him, his son Ayyapadeva became the ruler of Nalambavadi. He was friendly with Gangas and became the ruler of vast territory called Dolambavadi 32,000. The Madakeri inscription mentioned Ganga princess Gamabbe, that is mother of, of Ayyapadeva, and the erroneous pillar inscriptions mentioned the, her son Yeta. His, his inscriptions are found in at Bambadi, uh, Kanchipati and Madakeri. Another inscription at Dharmapuri mentions that a person named Lokaya donated a place called uh, place called Garegau, Garegur to a basri to a to a built uh, to a basri built earlier by Nandiyanna. Inscriptions of Palal Chora have been found at Kolatturu in Dharmapuri Taluk and Tindal in Palkadu Palkadu Taluk. From his inscription that Dharmapuri, the family tree of the Nolambas, is meant matrimonial relations with the Ganga. Nolamba and Chalukyas can be ascertained. He was succeeded by Bira Nolamba's elder brother Iriva Nolamba. Dilipa was a friend of Rashtakota Mumudi Krishna and participated in the expeditions undertaken by the Rashtakutas. By the time Dilipa's son, Nanni Nolamba, Rashtrakuta, Mummudi Krishna had died and was helpless. Then Immudi Marasimha of Ganga defeated him and assumed the title Nolamba Kula Kulantaka. Later, Immudi Mahendra, Immudi Irva Nolamba, etc. ruled. He appears to have ruled the Tungabhadra region for a long time as a charge of the Chalukyas of Kalyana. <coughs> In the Pudukote region, one Kodambalur is there. There one inscription you will find in 10th century. It is a rare, it is a uh, interior Tamil Nadu. Why that inscription is there? Uh, it is a question of debate. And uh, the Cholas rule started up, uh, in, uh, in Karnataka region from 991. But actually they conquered the Talakadu in 1004. Then only uh, Cholas ruling started in Karnataka. They ruled up to the end of the Tunga, uh, Kulatunga's end. Uh, the, uh, four, the three to four Kannada inscriptions are there in uh, 
ಕೃಷ್ಣಗಿರಿ ತಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣಗಿರಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚಾಲುಕ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಸಂಧಿ ವಿಗ್ರಹಿ ಪಿಡೇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣಿ ಚಾಲುಕ್ಯ ಕಿಂಗ್ ವಿಕ್ರಮಾದಿತ್ಯ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ತುಂಗ ಕುಲತ್ತುಂಗ ಚೋ ಕುಲತ್ತುಂಗ ಚೋಳ ಬೈ ದ ಅಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಈ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ದಿ ಶ್ರೀರಂಗಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೊನೇಟೆಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಕ್ಯಾಶ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೆರಿ ಪಿರ್ಚಲ್ ಈ ಲ್ಯಾಂಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವೈಸಳಾಸ್ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಇನ್ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ವೈಸಳಾಸ್ ರೂಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ವೆನ್ ದಿ ಚೋಳ ಡೈನೆಸ್ಟಿ ವಾಸ್ ವೀಕ್ ದಿ ವೈಸಳಾಸ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಡ್ ಬೋತ್ ಪಾಂಡ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚೋಳ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಗಿವ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಮೆಟಾಮೆನಿಯಲ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದೆಮ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದೆಟ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಇದು ನೇಮ್ ಸೇಕ್ ಚೋಳ ಅಡ್ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ರೂಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ವೈಸಳ ಆಫೀಸರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವೈಸಳ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಯಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದ ಮುಸ್ಲಿಂ ಇನ್ವೆನ್ಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಡ್ ಮಧುರೈ ಈಸ್ ಆಕ್ಯುಪೈಡ್ ಬೈ ಮುಸ್ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಅವರು ವೈಸಳ ವೆರಿ ವೀಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಥ್ರೋನ್ ಅವೇ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಕಣ್ಣ ನೂರ್ ಟು ದಿ ಕುಂದಾಣಿ ನಿಯರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣಗಿರಿ ಅಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ದೇ ರೂಲ್ ದ ಬೌಂಡ್ರಿ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ವಿಜಯನಗರ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ವಿಜಯನಗರ ದೇ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಪೇಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ವಂಡರ್ ಐ ಐ ಟೇಕನ್ ದ ಆಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಇಯರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ತಿರುವಡಿ ಟು ಮಂಗಳೂರು ಅಂದರೆ ದೇ ಸ್ಟಾ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ವಿಜಯನಗರ ಆರಿಜಿನೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ತಿರುವಡಿ ಕೋಲಾರ್ ಕೋಲಾರ್ ಹಾಸನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚಿಕ್ಕಮಗಳೂರು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಂಗಳೂರು ದಿಸ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಶೃಂಗೇರಿ ದಿಸ್ ರೀಸನ್ ದೇ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಪ್ಯು ದೇವರ್ ಆಲ್ ಪಿಡೇಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈಸಳ ಪಿಡೇಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಜಾಯಿಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ರಿಮೂವ್ ದ ಮುಸ್ಲಿಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಏರಿಯಾ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಯುನೈಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಯಾಂಡೆಡ್ ದ ಏರಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ದೇ ವೆಂಟ್ ಟು ದಿ ಹಂಪಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಜಯನಗರ ಈಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ತಿರುವಡಿ ಟು ಮಂಗಳೂರು ರೀಸನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ವ್ಯಾನಿಷಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೈಸಳ ವಿಜಯನಗರ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಮೈಸೂರು ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕೆ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ದ ಮೈಸೂರು ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟುಕ್ ಅಡ್ವಾಂಟೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನಾರ್ಕಿ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಕಲೋನೈಸೇಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಅರೋಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಪಾಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವಿಜಯನಗರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ ರಣಧೀರ ಕಂಠೀರವ ನರಸಿಂಹ ಒಡೆಯರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಏಯ್ಟ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ದ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಡೈನೆಸ್ಟಿ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಮಧುರೈ ರೀಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ವಾಸ್ ರೂಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಲೀಡರ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಗಟ್ಟಿ ಮೊದಲಿಯಾರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಂಕಟಾದ್ರಿ ಈ ಅಚೀವ್ಡ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿ ಮಧುರಾ ಅಡ್ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಸಚ್ ಆಸ್ ದಂಟಳ್ಳಿ ಸಿಂಗನಲ್ಲೂರು ಕಾವೇರಿ ಪ
they captured the most of the uh, up to the madurai area they captured uh, like that it happens and then uh, this uh, hyderabad came he taken most of the south india area uh, even including up to bidar he went but his son tipu sultan uh, lost everything to the britishers but actually uh, that mysore kingdom has expanded by hyderabad and vanished by the tipu sultan another way but uh, in our history we, uh, our people are highlighting uh, tipu sultan he part against this that that he survived only he part nothing else but in this uh, mysore kings are lucky see they never part all their uh, officers will pa- outside they will do all uh, occupy they have the uh, in british rule they contacted the maharani contacted the britishers and asked uh, to reposition our kingdom he helped the britishers at the sequences it happened nine districts of mysore state came to the mysore samsthanam actually it was not their area their area was only about mysore and its surroundings only luckily this uh, hyderabad expanded it <laughs> and after tipu sultan's uh, reason uh, some uh, 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 quarrel is happened uh, uh, from uh, for this this uh, nizamas and uh, marathas and british was all uh, together and uh, after uh, successful uh, acquiring sriranga patana finally maharani has got uh, nine districts of mysore state what is alay mysore samasthana is more than what the mysore kings are having earlier that is lucky even my bangalore kempe gowda has got bigger area than mysore in that thing but after hyderabad uh, <laughs> it is expanded like <laughs> it is the history of the mysore and there is a number of inscriptions in boundary party inscriptions not less more inscriptions are in salem dharmapuri and uh, that coimbatore region in dannayakana kote are all the products of uh, this mysore and vijayanagara ke oisala kings dannayakana kote itself uh, if you go through the, the streets of the coimbatore you will see the many names relating to the mysore kings maharaja street and even the petes having mangalwar pete somar pete like that all kada uh, names are there in uh, coimbatore city or <laughs> oh, it is impact of the mysore kings is more in uh, another way uh, i visited uh, several times to coimbatore the culture of uh, coimbatore and mysore is similar uh, very soft and uh, like that to people <laughs> uh, in the modern period uh, is also there uh, one inscription in 20th century also we got inscriptions in tamil nadu not in karnataka so uh, near uh, that is vasur in boundary area on uh, uh, it is uh, in the christian era and uh, uh, shaka era both it is 1910 and one more inscription belong to 1903 in vasur tal like that uh, later inscriptions also found like this a uh, lot of uh, things are there here administration divisions uh, uh, i don't want to tell uh, all those things uh, administration divisions what it is uh, existed in all these things and uh, in case of uh, administration division uh, my intention is to one thing is that uh, vijayanagara period in vijayanagara inscriptions uh, you will see some peculiar words for administration divisions uh, those are chavadi vente valita and magadi actually is rarely it is coming uh, all the historians are thinking are administration divisions valita vente and chavadi and but uh, uh, my review is like this chavadi means uh, it is a tax collecting counter that means a division of revenue it is a revenue division chavadi means it is revenue division not geographical administration division our historians say it is administration no it is only a revenue administration vente vente means capture or forcefully capture forcefully like that in kannada more vente reference more vente references more more uh, were noticed in the 
ಅರ್ಲಿ ವಿಜಯನಗರ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣದೇವರಾಯ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಟ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇನ್ ಸಂಗಮ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಇನ್ ಎ ನೈಬರ್ವುಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ತೋಡ್ ತಿರು ತಿರುವಡಿ ಟು ಮಂಗಳೂರು ಓನ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ ವಿಲ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ವೇಂಟೇಜ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎನಿವೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ ವಿಲ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ವೇಂಟೇಜ್ ನೈಬರ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಲೈನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ವೈ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ತಿರುವಡಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ತಿರುವಡಿ ಟು ಮಂಗಳೂರು ವೈ ಆರ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋಲಾರ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ತುಮಕೂರು ಹಾಸನ್ ಚಿಕ್ಕಮಗಳೂರು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೆನರ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ನೋಟೀಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ರೆಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ವೇಂಟೆ ಆಲ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಲೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ರೀಸನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಮೈಂಡೆಡ್ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಚೀಪ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಜಾಯ್ನ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಕ್ಕ ಬುಕ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಜಯನಗರ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಡ್ ದ ವೆಂಟನೆ ವೆಂಟನೆ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅದು ಆಕ್ಯುಪೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾಜ್ಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ವೆಂಟೆ ಒಳಿತ ಅಪ್ಪನ್ ಈ ಕಮ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಜಯನಗರ ಒಳಿತ ಒಳಿತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ ಒಳಿತ ಒಟ್ಟೆಳೆತ್ತು ಒಳಿತ ಲೈಕ್ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ ವಿ ಕಮ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಒಳಿತಾಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಡಿವಿಜನ್ ಟು ಬಿಗ್ ಡಿವಿಜನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಗ್ರಾಮ ಒಳಿತ ಸ್ಥಳ ಒಳಿತ ಸೀಮೆ ಒಳಿತ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಒಳಿತ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ಫೈರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ಟು ಜುಡಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಜುಡಿಷಿಯಲ್ usually all judicial matters were solved locally if not solved it not solved it will be moved to the higher circle thus village court is the lowest court and the rajya court is the higher supreme court like that that is astinavati ulitya is the supreme court and any village or nadu sime ulita means uh, lower division court we say actually ulitas or judicial administration Uh, chavadi is the uh, actually uh, 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 revenue administration and magani some magani is there i traced all maganis are connected with irrigation areas paddy fields granting lands in magani means uh, land having irrigation facilities kani means paddy paddy fields kani means paddy fields magani means mahakani big paddy fields so only irrigation areas are given to anybody that is called magani magani like that but uh, uh, most of the historians are thinking it is a division administration you know it is not a administration division it is a agriculture area or irrigated area like that these are uh, my findings in vijayanagar uh, history and uh, religious significance shaivism is there and uh, vaishnavism perfect uh, all the inscriptions uh, uh, termination for me they like that only and jaina inscriptions were there in this field and uh, tanks and uh, taxation uh, things are also there and uh, euro stones are more i already informed about uh, more than 40 euro stones are there in the region uh, that is to before 10th century that is important and uh, like this uh, my paper is there Uh, it was written in my book uh, uh, i had it a new things also whatever not in the inscription in my book uh, the new findings also i had it uh, i think uh, uh, this is uh, the review of uh, the inscriptions kannada uh, inscriptions uh, in tamil nadu i think if any questions are there please sir. ಮಲಯಾಳಂ ಸೊ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ
But uh, there are other uh, hmm. kings, Naika and uh, yeah, yeah. Vijayana. Yes. Vijaya, Vijayanagaram, and so many kings which, which are who are not uh, known to our Tamil people, yes, yes. but it is important to bring uh, together of all various uh, kingdoms mm. together and uh, see that how yes. the relationship between uh, different kingdoms yes. and how there is a decline of a particular kingdom, mm. arise of another kingdom, like that. Uh, it yes. is very, <laughs> the history writing is very complicated. Yes. I want to know in what way mm. this uh, is Canada inscription in Tamil Nadu. Mm. Also in other places, also in other states, also, also. put together, would he help uh, us to understand uh, better? Better, yes. Sir. All these really regions. Because uh, what I feel is, it's good to have a seminar relating a particular re re region, uh, region, region-wise uh, hmm. description and uh, archaeology has to co come up. Has hmm. to come up. I, that is what I feel. Yeah. So it is better to organize some seminar. No, I will. Yes, sir. That is true. Uh, we, we should study the history of uh, South India is one unit. That is the important, not uh, uh, peace uh, like anything. We have to study. I want to know some. You ha do you have any idea, any clue about the Kannada inscriptions found at uh, Kodumbalur? Hmm. Do you have any idea or anything, any special? Uh, mention or any particular uh, explanation or anything could you could you give kudumbaluru kudumbaluru is the interior tamil there uh, one uh, uh, tank is there the inscription is there the content is nothing only your few kannada lines are there few words are there it is in sanskrit and kannada sanskrit and uh, uh, Yes, it is Sanskrit and Kannada only. Sanskrit and... Uh, Sanskrit is another... Uh, but script is Kannada script. It's a, it's but a separate script. No, but no, no. Kannada script and language Sanskrit. Oh. Kannada script and language Sanskrit and Kannada script. That is there. Okay. Only pieces are pointed out. Why it is pointed is not known. But there is a relationship with Ganga. Yes, this is what... Uh, uh, but the name, whatever you find... Uh, their name is uh, Vikrama, like that name is coming. It is similar to that of Gangas. So that uh, at that time, the uh, uh, inscription shape and uh, the 10th century. So that 10th century, there is a relationship between the Purumbararu and Gangas like that. It is uh, published in the uh, epigraphical volumes and studied by the BGL Swami. You might have now, he is in Presidency College, a uh, botany lecturer. But uh, he is very interested in uh, historical studies. And, uh, like that. Uh, he indicated and he wrote an article. I've gone through that. Uh, I will show my uh, PPDs. This is Tamil Nadu map. There, another inscription is there. It is in uh, Grantha script. That is more important. But language is Kanda. And that is true in the form of verses, poems from Oli uh, This is the first uh, Kanda inscription found in Tamil Nadu. That is Kanchi. Uh, this is the first inscription we find in uh, Tamil Nadu, Kannada inscription, uh, belongs to 7th century. It is in uh, Rajasingeshwara temple. Uh, um, it's already the same, same is the same inscription. And uh, this is recently found one. Uh, it's a Shumara's uh, inscription, earliest Shumara, that is uh, Shumara 1, 679 and 625. This uh, now it is preserved in the Krishnagiri Museum. Uh, this is the Yeravesha world, uh, what I described. Yeravesha world is here. It is very important because a rare world is there. It supports our literature also. Yeravesha is a suicide spot. Huh? Suicide spot no, 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 no. Yeravesha means uh, a person who part for his master. Commitment, with commitment. Uh, he taken the commitment and he will part for the, his master, may die, may not die, that is different. The same uh, inscription, uh, description is there. This is one what I told uh, in the Grantha script. Grantha script, but language used is Kannada. And that is two in poems, three Kandapadhyas are there. Three Kandapadhyas are there, uh, it is in Malay. 
only Malay China cape. And the same thing is uh, made to line drawing and uh, what is the write up is there. Swasti, Shivamar, Atmajan, like that it, uh, it will go. And uh, uh, Gangas of Karnataka Jaina sites is marked here. That uh, Siyamangala and Poli uh, Malay and some other places in Ganga period. Uh, this is a Ganga structure. We will point at uh, uh, Vijayamangala near Erode. It is a fully Ganga structure. And uh, these are the two uh, Nalamba Euro stones at uh, Navilai. But in the inscription it is called Naviluru. Naviluru. In Kannada inscriptions, the place is called as Naviluru. In Tamil, we will call Navilai. But uh, that name is uh, differently, some patti like that recently it is pronounced. Two uh, This is uh, one uh, Vijay Mangala, Chandra Prabha Basti. Uh, these are Valli Malai Jaina Caves. Inscription. Uh, uh, Images also there, inscription also visible see there. That one, some inscriptions are there. And see inscription is there. Here also one line is Kannada and further lines are in Granta script. But language used is Kannada. Script is uh, Granta, language used is Kannada. This is C. Kannada Bhase, Granta Lipel Lerva, Banners or Bana Kings. Inscription belonging to Banas uh, in uh, only, only Malay. The language used is Kannada, but script is okay. And this is Jaina images only, only Malay. The same thing uh, what I saw. Uh, this is Siyamangalam, Jaina caves. It is uh, the Rachamalla king, uh, second, uh, it was uh, built. And uh, uh, in Adamana Kote and Dharmapuri, this uh, temple like uh, solids, blocks are there. It is uh, Dharmapuri and Adamana Kote Jaina inscription. And uh, Nolamba inscriptions of the Dharmapuri. Now uh, in our museum is there, Bangalore, Chennai Museum. Same thing uh, available. Maybe. Uh, brought from the Dharmapuri. The same stampage of that uh, small sort of one. This is the. This is also in uh, Chennai Museum, brought from Ch uh, uh, that is uh, Dharmapuri. This is one in uh, uh, in uh, Chennai city only, uh, Kalakshetra. Kalakshetra, Kannada hero stone. Uh, this is the one more important. Uh, everybody is telling that uh, uh, Tokolam War was taken place. Uh, 9, 949 and 50. Because it is a dog, in the name of a dog memorial, dog was given to that Manalara by Bhutuka when he was part with the Cholas. Cholas because he supported the Mamudi Krishna and in, at that time he asked uh, what you want like that. He asked only give your dog that son. He is taken dog. But uh, when it was died, he is made the, this memorial stone. This uh, memorial stone happened in 949. But our historians is telling that uh, the Takolam war is taken place in 1949. How it is? There are 109 uh, 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 this uh, Rastakota Mumudi Krishna's inscriptions is all over in uh, the Tondai Mandala area. That is the earliest one recorded by Swaminathan is 944. But recently one point at Veli Malay is 943. It is its fourth year administration. Then the war might have taken either in 943 or earlier to one or two years. Plus or minus one or two. Earlier to that, not uh, 943. Uh, 942 or 41 like that. The war is happened five to six years earlier to death of this dog. But in our history, we are all <laughs> dealing like this. It is a wonder. Uh, see, this is one more inscription. It is in uh, Thirvo Triyor. More important. Because uh, that uh, Dag Memorial is indicated the Takolam war date. But this is after many years. Impact of uh, war. This fellow is that uh, helped the 
battle for Rajaditya. So he is uh, helpless. I thought I, I, if I am there, though, he may, may win the war. In my absence, it is apparent. He himself is went to the Himalaya and come back and stayed uh, near uh, and taken the sannyasa and became a guru. At that time, he explained those things. It is the period of Mumbudi Krishna. The, this indicates that uh, war is apparent. I am not participated in the war. Because of that, he went to the Himalaya and come back. And finally, he is uh, taken a sannyasa. And uh, for that sannyasi, this Mumudi Krishna period, some donations are given. This is a peculiar thing. Uh, it is also another thing, it, uh, war when is happening and uh, uh, what is the impact. When Rajaditya is died, he is thinking that fellow, I am a subordinate of Rajaditya, I have not helped him in the entire. That is a uh, <laughs> wonderful things are there. The same inscription is published in the Indica volume, India. Uh, this is recently found uh, Mumudi Krishna's inscription in Ullimbale. It is not that uh, recorded in the volumes. In my book, I incorporated this one. Uh, in this uh, inscription, he is telling his fourth year. Fourth year means it is 943. 943. It is one more uh, Karana inscription of Rathakutas, uh, Tirmalacheri. I already explained it. Here it is Rajamartanda and the temple was built. But that temple not here in Tamil Nadu, it is in Gujarat. But it is, uh, there is a relationship with that we have to, and bad, uh, broad spectrum you have to analyze this one. And uh, I told that uh, the Kalyani Chalikyas, uh, Vikramaditya, sixth inscription in Sri Rangam. The Kannada inscription is there in Sri Rangam. It is a Kannada Sandhi Vigrahi. We, he donated uh, some pun to for perpetual lamp and all those things. This is the Kannada copper plate inscription uh, in uh, Sri Rangam temple. And this is the latest inscription in Tamil Nadu, present Tamil Nadu region, that's in uh, Kumbhalapura near uh, Osur. A person, his name is Anumanta, he fallen from the horse and died. That's only indicates. In memory of that uh, inscription is good. That is in 1910. It is dated in both Christian era and uh, Hindu era. <laughs> This is different, this is not concerned to it. This is one of the Tamil inscriptions found in our village. Uh, we are not yet disciplined, but now this inscription is not available permanently because there uh, one railway station is uh, done. At that time, they destroyed. But anyway, about 30 years ago, uh, I taken this copy. <laughs> At least it is there. <laughs> so, on behalf of the uh, Tamil Heritage Trust, in fact, uh, I thank Dr. Uh, P. B. Krishnamurthy uh, for having accepted the uh, V. Venkaya Epigraphy Award for 2023. I also thank, in fact, uh, some of his friends who have come down from Bangalore all the way to attend this uh, function. And uh, I thank, in fact, many of my colleagues, in fact, especially uh, VSS Iyer, who designed the um, you know, posters and also designed the uh, citation. Um, also thank um, other colleagues like Vallabha, Badri, Shyam, Kishore, uh, and uh, especially Dr. Professor Swaminathan, who had been our uh, guide and mentor for all our efforts okay, throughout. Uh, thank in fact, everyone. Thank who had, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the audience who had come and uh, sat uh, through the um, program and for patiently. Yeah. So uh, Dr. Krishnamurti would like to present a couple of his books to Professor Swaminathan.
Uh, our special thanks to Sri N. Gopalaswamy, former uh, Chief Election Commissioner, who had uh, graciously uh, accepted our uh, invitation and uh, uh, handed over the award to Dr. P. V. Krishnamurti. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, thanks the RK Center for having hosted us. And thank the audience for having patiently sat through the program. Thank you.